welcome to our show. On today's show, we're talking about finding true love. And I'm honored to have Mike in studio today as my co-host. Mike, how's it going? What's going on? Happy We've to be here. We've been trying to book you for some time. And I'm so <laughs> glad that you're in studio today. So tell us a little bit about yourself before we get into the dating tips and about your project as well that you founded. Sure. Yeah. How, when did it all start? Uh, it started back in 2008. I was a client for um, a different dating company because um, when I moved here from uh, from Saudi Arabia, which is where I was oh, raised. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, I, I didn't was, know that. I was born in a small farm back in the Philippines, but then my, my teenage years I spent in Saudi. And then when I came to Canada, when I was 17, I really struggled fitting into the Canadian culture. You know, I know, right? Mm -hmm. I'm also an immigrant, so I totally understand what you're talking about. So you've been here for 12 years, 12 right? years, yeah. 12 years this spring. So Wow. Yeah. So how did you become a dating coach? Well, not even a dating coach. <laughs> um, you're, like I called you a master matchmaker, but that's <laughs> okay. not what you are. Mm -hmm. You offer a lot more to your clients than just dating advice, correct? Mm -hmm. So it's tell true. us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, I, I'm more of a strategist. You know, my my utmost belief is I want to be I want I want my clients to be able to um, you know dating is a is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So the the service that I offer it's not a quick fix but a Kickstarter for my clients to be able to get the experience and the plan to be able to find their ideal woman on their own because that's right. Yeah, that's right. So when did you start um, the social man project and what was the mission really behind it? Sure. Our mission is to give women good men. So our Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm single, by the way. Are Perfect. you taken? I'm just curious. I've seen someone. Just curious. Very nice. Yeah. It's always good to know that somebody that does this type of business mm -hmm. and in this industry has found a man, you know, or has a found a partner. <laughs> Sorry, let's get that straight, guys, <laughs> has found their partner um, because, you know, sometimes some people that are in this business don't even have a mate mm -hmm. so it's really great to hear that you actually have someone special in your life yeah I, I mean it's you know things are things are very casual there's nothing very serious because I do a lot of traveling but, yeah you know, that's there's, right there's someone that I'm interested in for sure okay so what are some upcoming projects that you have coming up uh, I'm moving to Vancouver at the oh, end of no. yeah the we're end gonna of, miss you yeah, no, I'll be back here well I'm, you're always a friend of the show and you're always welcome to come back and today is gonna be a great show mm -hmm. we have a live performance by Shorter Ree okay. and DJ Kuda and then we also have comedian Victoria Banner coming up soon so it's gonna be good awesome. but before we um, continue forward I just want to ask you some questions regarding what are some of the things that your clients approach you with like what kind of issues are they having problems with where they turn to you for assistance and advice mm -hmm. the biggest uh, three of the biggest uh, struggles that my clients have number one is um, a sense of self-worth they don't think they're good enough the second one is they have a, a paralyzing um, fear of approaching women you know they think they're gonna just get badly rejected and number three is they struggle with knowing the right thing to say so th these are you know very common topics that I get from my clients anywhere from 21 to our our most recent client that just signed up with us uh, who is 59 so 59, 59 years old. 59, yeah. So he hasn't it, given up on wow. love. Wow. So what was his issue? 59 years old, hasn't given up on love, which was great. But mm -hmm. what was the dilemma he was facing? He's divorced, and you know he's had failed relationships in the past. And um, you know I just read his questionnaire yesterday, and he said he wants to do it right, you know this time around, right? So I'm Very here to support nice. that journey. Very nice. How about for the females? What are you finding the females could really, you know? What kind of tips should our girls, and for myself as well, what can we gain from knowing about guys? And mm -hmm. when we're in the dating scene, how to kind of approach? Because let's just be honest, sometimes it's not easy to read men. Mm -hmm. It really isn't. For sure. I think it's uh, just having clarity about the kind of uh, relationship you want to be in. Because So I've done a couple workshops for women uh -huh. in Calgary and in Vancouver. And the biggest struggle that most women have is they're not clear about the kind of relationships they they want to be involved with you know everyone has their list okay so how yeah they know the list, yeah, the right? list right he's got to be like six feet tall sure. you know built but what are some of the things that you hear some of the women come up with you and say like oh look I kind of want a guy that's like this I don't want a guy that's shorter than me mm -hmm. I don't want a guy that's like too overweight but just kind of slender or you know even race sometimes matters right For religion sure. mm -hmm. matters a lot mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you've noticed well dating is an experience right yeah. it's, a, it's a shared experience between both men and women so it's not like you're shopping for a brand new pair of shoes or or a new no. dress you know it you, you have to factor in the kinds of experiences you'd like to be sharing with your partner so you, this has to be clear and most women would really Absolutely. simplify their dating life if they go yes or no there's no maybe because a lot of women think that they can change men and I think <laughs> 
oh Lord, you yeah. know what? Let me tell you something. I've been really guilty of that myself, mm -hmm. Mike, um, in the dating scene. I've really been guilty of that. And the guys that I've dated where I thought, you know what? You know, I, I could put him together. Sure. You know, he just needs a little bit of work, a little bit of confidence. Mm -hmm. But I'm tired personally of attracting men with low self-esteem mm -hmm. that I need to kind of mother and put together. Honestly, Sunday Imani ain't doing that, guys. I ain't doing that no more. <laughs> no more. So what's your advice for someone like me? Because I also find that sometimes when I meet guys, either they're kind of intimidated by me or are men really intimidated by strong women, by the it way? It depends Just curious. where you find your dates, right? Because I teach this in my workshop. So, you know, I lead with every single session with the most important word in dating, which is empathy. I think if, you know, both men and women are able to put themselves in the position of yeah. their ideal partner and, and what they want and what they're looking for in a, in a relationship and in a significant other, it's so much easier to show up as that person if you well know what they're looking said. for. Well said. Well, if anyone's watching this, I'm looking for a compassionate man, a man <laughs> that's really passionate about what he does, right? I mean, and just goal oriented. Mm -hmm. I think that that's really, really vital. But I'm also curious, just for my girls out there and some of my guys, where are some of the best places to meet single people? Sure. So this comes down to what I had mentioned a few minutes earlier about mm -hmm. getting clear about the kind of relationships you want to be in. So if you look at dating from a Monday to Sunday, perspective mm -hmm. so if you look at your week you know like what kind of things do you want to be doing right you know are you a more active kind of person do you like going to shows do you like going uh, do you like traveling do you like going to personal development events so once you've taken a, sta a, a stock of the activities you want to be a part of it's so much easier to just show up there and meet your significant other in those places That's where, a great point. where you have mutual interests, right? So That's really a great point. Mm -hmm. So what's your tips for people who are looking for long-lasting relationships who are currently in a relationship that they love and they want to keep and they want to maintain, but they also want to self-improve? Mm -hmm. How can they work on themselves and work on their relationship? I think most people should get out of the idea that relationships are meant to last forever because oh, it's oh, not. Okay. Oh, my bad. Okay. It's, All right. It's not, it's not meant to last forever. They should just focus on showing up as the best version of, the, of themselves well every single day. Because if they do that, if, take, if they take their relationship on a day-to-day -day level and, and um, you know, take things step by step, then you know, as a byproduct, the relationship lasts so much longer, right? Because both people are staying not out of obligation, but because they want to be in that relationship. Well said. I really think that you have to be in it to win it mm -hmm. and together as well. Mm -hmm. What is some of your advice for the men out there that are maybe suffering with self-esteem issues, mm -hmm. you know, that don't know how to have that icebreaker, you know, statement before they approach some chick and get deep into it? Mm -hmm. What's your advice for them? Well, the most important relationship that anyone can have is the one with themselves, right? So I think the more men focus on just becoming a better version of who they are, you know, go to the gym, you know, uh, uh, upgrade go your- Go to the gym, I got a membership, good life <laughs> fitness. Good upgrade life fitness. Upgrade your clothing, you know, have, like, have a, a, a great social life, right? Focus on becoming a better version of yourself. And from then on, because the thing is you can't fake self-esteem, you know, you attract who you are, right? So Absolutely. even though you're, you're, you know, you're at the club and you're buying all the, the bottle service and you, you have your expensive car and your clothes, but deep within, if you don't think you're good enough, that's gonna show up in your relationships. Mike, you really inspire me. I must say Thank I'm you. so grateful to have you here today. Um, really, I believe in the services that you provide. Even for me, I'm a single woman and um, I, I really appreciate this because it's all from the heart mm -hmm. and your service is genuine and it really showcases who you are as well and you're definitely a confident man <laughs> you're well dressed Thank i must you. say yeah you came on point on studio today you had our stylist adora no for kind of in awe and in shock because <laughs> um, she felt she had to put something together but no she didn't how about dressing for success in relationships because um, i find that sometimes image says a lot about who we are Huge. um so what's your like what's your mindset in regards to that should we you know should our personalities kind of be showcased by how we present ourselves? And what do men sometimes think when women are dressed in a particular way? There's a few questions you asked here. So I know, me, right? Let, yeah, let well, me... Well, we'll wrap it up with whatever you want no, no, to. No, no, no. Let's, let's, uh, let's break it down to how men should uh, dress and show up and yeah. what women are looking... What men think about women who are very well dressed. So the first question that you ask... Uh, again, this goes back to the word empathy, right? You know, yeah. figure out the kind of girl you want to attract and, and just show up as that person. You know, if you want to attract, um, you know, like a, like an entrepreneurial, like downtown kind of girl, well, guess yeah. what? Guess how you have to show up, right? You know, yeah. if you want to attract a more casual and laid back kind of girl, then maybe the suit and tie will not work, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and for, you know, women out there who are, 
they're they're very well put together. They're very dressed up. I, you know, my suggestion is, you know, like who are you dressing for? Because the thing is, it's kind of like when guys go to the gym and they get way too big, and uh -huh. it's like they, they lost the whole point of why they're staying fit, right? You know, I'm, oh, I'm, God. I'm sure there's women out there who love, you know, the, the really big muscular guys. I know, right? But yeah, the there part, is. Not my type, but you know. Exactly. Most women just want their guys, uh, their guys to be fed, and same with same with men. Uh, uh, they want their they want their ladies to be, you know, put together enough, but yep. not too intimidating. Because Correct. it works backwards at that point, right? Men well start said, Mike. Well said. Well, anyways, if people want to get in touch with you, how can they reach you? Uh, they can visit my website. It's uh, socialmanproject.com. And they can uh, check my, um, my online program. It's called getdaytimedates.com. I love it. And I'm looking forward to hosting with you. After the break, we have comedian Victoria Banner joining us to share her experience on the dating scene. <laughs> Welcome back to our show. We have my co-host, Mike here, and Victoria Banner, comedian. How are you doing? I am doing really awesome. Welcome to our show. Thank you for having me on the show. Okay, so cool. Victoria, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're a local comedian yeah. and a feminist, I hear. The Apparently, rumor has it, right? No, I just start trouble on Facebook is what okay, happens. Okay, very nice. I did read that nice guy thing. What happened with that, by the way? Oh, I uh, went on a rant on Facebook because... I read it. <laughs> yes, that's right, Mike. She did. Uh, that's how it <laughs> Uh, there was a guy on my Facebook, and every single time I wrote, uh, hey, who wants to come see a movie with me? Or I'm sitting by myself watching Netflix. Anyone want to cuddle? This dude I didn't know. Anyone want to cuddle? Yeah, oh, stuff God, like that. It. This dude I've never uh -huh. met in my entire life would be like, he, he wouldn't say, I want to. He'd just come on my Facebook and be like, I don't have a girlfriend. Eh. And then he just wouldn't do anything. And it was to the point where I knew that he was like, subscribe to my posts. And I was like, I don't like this. So I deleted him. And then I put that on the internet so other people might not reenact this creepy behavior. And if he had just come, to, like, I have like four shows a week. If he'd come to one of my shows or come to one of my open house parties or come to just like a pub night where there's lots of people, yeah, fine. But the fact he was just trying to like get his way into my basement like a weirdo, it was not a thing that I enjoyed. And I got a lot of flack. From oh, the, did you? <laughs> That's interesting. Did you get a lot of flack for that? I did because a lot of people took it as me being upset for a guy for having a crush on me. And mm. they, they thought that I was basically being like, I don't like this guy because he has a crush on me and I don't want to date him. And that is not the case because there's tons of guys that are like totally flirty with me and I'm like, we're not, we're not doing this, but you're pretty fun. Like, so as a female comedian, do you have a lot of like male groupies or female groupies mm. who knows right <laughs> a lot more <laughs> female groupies actually oh, believe it okay. or not Very but nice. uh, guys don't like uh, girls uh, that do comedy that much it's starting to kind of get a little better with like girls like Eliza Schlesinger and uh, who else oh there's tons uh, Oh, I want to say another good one. Up, yeah, is what you're telling yeah, us. it's it's more uh, good, like like oh Tina Fey, like Amy Poehler. Everyone wants that now. Yeah. But for the longest time, they're kind of afraid of having a girl that's more funny than them, because they don't want to be at the party and then be telling their funny guy story, like their bro story, and then the girl outbro them. Like they don't well, like that. I know, right? Well, I'm really <laughs> proud of you. Honestly, you've reached a great level of success, and um, we're only going to see much more from you. I'm curious. So you're single. How is it in the single scene? Um, it was a uh, hard, like, I finally just hit this point where I'm like, I love it, and I never want to date another human being again in my entire life. But <laughs> for my entire teens, I think every single, like, every five minutes was just wailing into a pillow, just, I hate everything, and I'm lonely, and everything. <laughs> it's a book. But now it's been that five and a half years, and at that four and a half year mark, like, I, like this last year, I've just been like, yes, I can do anything. But would you like to meet somebody, though? Um, ideally, because I, yeah. I do fall in love with people. Uh -huh. I just don't like having to be responsible to them and tell them, like, when I'm passed out in a ditch or something like that. Like, I don't like that. Uh, so I, I like being in love with people, and I do fall in love with lots of people but I don't like having to tell them where I'm going and what I'm doing and maintain a relationship. That's not a thing that I enjoy. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, Mike, what's your advice for <laughs> Victoria here? Because it seems like she's got a lot going on with a busy schedule. She's got the random groupies. She has the nice guys <laughs> that she also has to confront sure. on social media, um, <laughs> right? But she does love love and falling in love. Mm -hmm. 
you know, what are some th things that you think that she could do a little differently? Um, 2015, Ooh. Valentine's Day. Ooh. Ooh. Well, my, my approach is always re reverse engineering the outcome, right? So getting clear about where you want to go and then figuring out where, where you're at and then bridging that gap. So I've prepared some simple questions here for you just to help you get some some clear yeah no, I don't know. yeah <laughs> just to help you get some clarity about what you're looking for so um, my my first question uh, Victoria is what's your what's your most important goal in dating um, I think that making sure that it's real and that there isn't other factors because I found myself being distracted by other factors like or what other people think mm -hmm. so I've gone out on a date with a guy and I've totally found myself being on the phone the next day being like he's a millionaire and then being like do I really care about the fact do I personally care about the fact that he's a millionaire or does that just look good on paper and there's so many times that I find myself um, liking someone because they look good on paper, but then realizing they were completely incompatible. So mm -hmm. I want someone that I'm completely compatible with, no matter how they look on paper. So what does that look like? When you say completely compatible, describe that to me. Um, I love talking. And uh, <laughs> as you so can tell, I. as you can tell, so I'm, very, I'm very yakety yak. <laughs> and so I will, I will never stop talking. So I need someone who is able to interrupt me, for one, because uh -huh. uh, like doesn't let me go on. Uh, someone that will laugh at my jokes, someone that makes, like, it, it, comedy is the number one thing. I, you have to laugh at my jokes. I want to laugh at what you do. And I like playing games with people. Mm -hmm. Like, it, I'll turn oh, any conversation. Oh, what kind of games, girl? This is what a kind of game? Like, I'm going to bring... Continue. Yeah, like, I like playing That's games, so like, cute. conversation so, okay. games. And nice. so uh, I'll make, like, impressions of people in the <laughs> middle of a sentence. Or uh, I'll, like, turn everything into a word game. And I want people to play with me in that way That's in a conversation. Cute. And if someone can't do that, I lose interest so fast. And then again, like the only way to get me to shut up is like to listen to like indie rock music. And if you don't like that, then I'm like, I can't, th we can't be compatible because the talking thing gets in the way, I For think. Sure. So what are, you, what are you currently doing right now to find this person? Like what are, what are methods that you're... Uh, it's what I'm not doing, actually. Sure. I was doing so much online dating mm. and I realized that that is not, my, is not my thing. And so right now I'm doing a lot of pushing people I'm just away. I'm what websites were you on and that you <laughs> were just like, mm, I don't know. Did it involve um, any swiping to the I right was or doing to the left? Tindering, <laughs> yeah, I definitely had some good okay Tinder Cupid, times. were you on there? I as was well, on girl? OK Cupid. I had right. an amazing OK Cupid date. <laughs> oh, very nice. Uh, do you want to hear about the best OK Cupid date I ever had? In okay, my well, wait, life? I think Mike has one more question. Oh, sorry, sorry. About sorry. Okay like, what, what, are you, what are you currently doing <laughs> to find this partner? Oh, um, I'm just, I'm literally not looking for a partner right now. Is okay. uh, I'm not actively trying to, because I think that if I. Uh, if I think that someone's being shoehorned into my life, if I've been set up with someone, I'm like, it's not real. And so currently I'm just wandering around like grocery stores for like eight hours a day, okay, hoping that I just bump library. into. Yeah, yeah, public library, grocery stores, just like, they're getting creeped out. Like I haven't bought anything <laughs> at any point, And so they're just hoping that maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so you're just making it happen natural. I, ideally. Like, do you like, recommend that as well? Because you were saying it was all about, you know, when I asked Mike earlier about some spots to find single people, um, Mike was just like, it all depends on what we kind of, you know, our interests are, right? Like if we like art, going to some art museums, art shows and stuff like that. Um, what else, Mike? I was going to say, like, you're looking things. for a very specific type, right? So you have to be empathetic and figure out, you know, define this this ideal man that you're looking for and then think, you know, put yourself in his situation and think like, what does he like to do? Where does he hang out? And just, you know, put yourself in that situation so that serendipitous moment can happen more frequently because 80% of success is just showing up. Absolutely. Yeah. So I showing love, up at the that. right place, right? I love so. that. All right. Mm -hmm. Here, I love that. I'm going to find some true love. <laughs> okay, well, that's your camera yeah. right there. <laughs> camera number one is yours. So why don't you talk to your future dude right there? You need a guy that can make you laugh, right? I need a guy that can make me laugh, uh, who isn't terrified of me because I'm really <laughs> loud and I'm very angry. I don't know if you picked that. I go a lot and I don't yes, enjoy do. that. And so, yeah, the amount of times that I just stop making sentences happen and I just make sound effects, that it's, that's oh, not man. a nice thing that people enjoy. So if you like sound effects, that's a nice thing. And um, I think I want to be the less per crazy person in the relationship. So, if you're more crazy, that forces me to be responsible. So, if you can somehow make 
less sentences than I've made this entire chat, we're, we're good for we each other. We love it though, we love it. <laughs> I mean, I'm yak yak as well. And I think that um, any man that could be with a woman that's as vibrant as you and as passionate as you are is a remarkable <laughs> man because I have a lot going on myself too. And I think that your story is so vital and it's interesting <laughs> sometimes the women that are successful in their realm and their are arena sometimes have a hard time finding a mate and it's hard even you were talking um, earlier about corporate there's some people who are working in the corporate scene here in Calgary that have a hard time finding a mate do you recommend um, Vic Victoria was saying earlier that she did the online dating stuff what's your um, viewpoint on that again it depends it depends about it depends about what kind of relationship you want to be in and what kind of guy you want to attract and then you figure out where he hangs out because from the sounds of it, he may not be online. You know, he may be he may be somewhere. You know, at your your at your grocery store. Yeah, <laughs> right? you're, you're given such a limited time during a day, right? And if you're not very right. if you're not strategic on how you're going about finding your ideal partner, then you're going to be wasting a lot of time, right? So. That's really nice. So I'm curious if people want to get in touch with you and maybe a guy that's watching the show today um, might want to come out and see you um, do your thing on stage. <laughs> how can people get in touch with you? Uh, I am a riot on Twitter apparently. So uh, <laughs> it's because I have a day job and I have eight hours a day where I can just play on Twitter. And so that's ideally the best way. And I think my tags, yeah, there's it is. It was right there. Uh, it's come at. Back. <laughs> It's come at, uh, at Def's not Victoria because I wanted not Victoria, but someone took that. So I'm like, I'm definitely not Victoria, I guess. So that okay. was how I... Nice, nice. And, and we're also on Facebook. Um, yeah, of course, yeah. Facebook. Um, and uh, yeah, just ask me. The best way is like to ask me, or if you see me around Calgary, because Calgary's small and I do go out a lot, if you see me, uh, even though I'm talking about how cranky and weird I am, I'm the yeah. most approachable person ever. You are, you are. <laughs> we had an opportunity actually, um, Victoria and I, um, to hang out. Um, we went out, um, had some food, watched her <laughs> perform. She is lovely. She's not as scary as she's putting out there, guys. I mean, yeah. um, so please don't be afraid of this redhead when you see I her love beers. out in the streets like, of Calgary. Ask me out for beers. We'll have beers and we'll talk more than even what's going on right now. Very it's nice. Weird. Before we let you go, I'm just curious. Um, what has been like the worst pickup line that you've heard from a guy? Just curious. Sure. Mike, you know you boys yeah, do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, pickup line. And uh, Mike's helping out a lot of guys, by the way, on this in this arena. <laughs> my personal favorite is after every single show, there's always that like Alberta, like Fort Back truck guy with the uh, <laughs> with a nice shirt that's tight and has the studs on it, you know, those ones, a sideways hat, and he goes, you know. I usually don't find women very funny and then just proceeds to finish the sentence with something horrible and terrible and so that's usually a good one but then they end it with a compliment and do want to go out sometime oh wow so, yeah that's a yeah the typical the typical alberta bro uh usually has the best pickup lines by like i don't know insulting your dreams and uh, oh wow <laughs> okay mike you wouldn't recommend that right <laughs> No. No, right? Because you need to I have a man. I love my dreams insulted. Yeah. Oh, kidding? do you? That's oh, okay. All right. Yeah, well, just it works be real for her, mean right? to my dreams <laughs> and uh, tell me that women aren't funny. I just, my favorite. Are you kidding? Oh, jeez. I know, right? <laughs> Heard it all. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning into our show. Up next, we have a live performance by Shorty Reed.